Welcome to another 11 out of 10 podcast. We're bringing it bigger and better every single week. Uh, unfortunately, our co-host Zachary Keeps is on vacation this week, so we didn't have the chance to kick it with him, but we got a legendary guest to make up for it. The one and only Bradley. You guys, if you haven't seen the behind the scenes video where we spent a day with Bradley and he helped me increase uh, the revenue of my business by over $1.5 million just by giving me advice uh, on that last behind the scenes. Uh, guys, go check that out. Absolutely incredible. And we're going to dive in today. Brad, welcome to Arizona. Thank you. Thanks for coming and kicking it with us. My pleasure. Here man. today. Let's dive into it. So real quick. Yeah. Now, this is a real estate podcast. There's been a lot of crazy shit going on in real estate. I yeah. want to get your thoughts. Realtors you just got hit. NAR got hit with a $450 million lawsuit. They're no longer able to go extort 3% commissions as buyer's agents. What do you think about all that? Well, is that, has that like, is that the bottom line now? Yeah. Finally, it's like, you can't. Because I was watching for a minute and it was like, this might happen. The, yeah, they were cool. They basically got hit with a lawsuit because they're basically colluding. You know, if, if, if you're, you're posting, what? they're colluding. Oh, colluding, yeah. You know, if someone posted something like, hey, it's a 1% buyer's agent's fee or whatever, everyone just ignore it and just, they're just they're working together to kind of protect that 3%. And then the government came in and was like, hey, you guys are, this is this is anti-competitive business, and with I think it was four hundred fifty million. We'll we'll fact check that. I think it's four hundred fifty some million dollar lawsuit. So there's one point five million real estate agents right now. People are saying that a million of those are going to be gone. They're going to be out of the business. Well, there's a lot of realtors that should be out of business anyway. You ever Facts. you ever get called back from a realtor? <laughs> Like, bro, I've left so many messages for realtors to call me back and they don't call back. Like, it, really it, I'm thinking, are you so busy, so successful, selling so many homes that you don't have time? Because if you don't have time, then hire some assistants. Yeah. Like, dude, I think it's a, I think it's ridiculous. But to me, 3%, bro, like, depending on the, the, the number of the house, that's a lot. Yeah. First of all. Second of all, what is it that they're actually doing? Yeah. Paperwork? You know, they got to show a few homes. It's called you know, sales for a reason. But at the end of the day, I mean, do you believe it's worth 3%? No. And not only that, like, isn't it 6%? Like you have to- Yeah, 3% on one side, 3% on the other. Yeah, like, dude, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think it can be worth it if they can- Worth what? Like, listen, yeah. if no, listen, if nobody will buy my yeah. house and you come along and sell it, it's worth 10%. Yeah. But I'm exactly. going to I'm going to sell my house. You know there's buyers in the market. All yeah. you have to do is show it and I'm forced to use you. Now I don't mind them getting 3% if the homeowner wants to give them 3%. Yeah. But at the end of the day, to me, it's like all you're doing is forcing me to use a realtor mm -hmm. and now I'm going to have to pay these fees on the front and the back. It's it's collusion. It's freaking yeah. highway robbery. I think on realtors the, aren't going to like that, but no. it's the truth. I think on on the seller side, if, if I was a real estate agent and I was selling properties and I could show with numbers that, hey, here's what the average property is selling for per square foot, right? And I could show that, hey, I actually sell stuff for 5% higher than what stuff sells for on average per square foot. Then it's worth the 3%. But on the buyer side, most people are just finding their properties on Zillow. Most people are just finding them online. Yeah, even if you if you know of one. If you're a realtor, bro, and I come to you and I say, hey, listen, I'm looking for a house in Scottsdale. You know, it needs to be, you know, five bedroom pool, you know, hopefully with a view somewhere in, in a gated community. Yeah. If you know your inventory and you know the, the area, right? You go, oh, I know three of them. You go show me one. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. Okay, let's write an offer. Boom. What'd you do? Yeah. A couple What'd hours of work. And, and let's say that's a $7 million house. Yeah. So, so you earn, are you trying to tell me you earned 210? Yeah, I got to just take out the cigars. Oh, why? Because they're not allowed to smoke up here. Okay. Oh, well, tell them it's too late. <laughs> tell them we'll be finished momentarily. See, I would, get it if there's a bunch of kids around, but when there's no one up here. No, that would, that would eliminate my ability to live here. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, back to what I was saying, bro. Yeah. So I buy a $7 million house from you. You earned... Two hundred and ten thousand for some paperwork. Is that what? What's three percent of seven million? Yeah, yeah. Two hundred and ten thousand. So I call you. I say I'm looking for this. You know where it is. You meet me there. We walk around the property. 
I say, I love it. Let's write an offer. We write an offer. You, you made 210,000. <laughs> you earned that. Like, honestly, did you earn that? No, you extracted that. No, you that. got that. You got you that. You got that because of the rules. Well, thankfully, finally, the government's stepping in going, dude, those are stupid rules. Yeah. How about how about negotiate with the homeowner? How's it? What is it now? Like, did they change it to something particular? I haven't gone too deep on this, but basically, they're just like, hey, you cannot. You, the stuff that they were doing to basically collude to protect that 3%, they blocked them from doing all that. So now, what they're trying to do is allow homeowners to negotiate that 3% down, right? <laughs> I'm going to keep smoking. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so no, I don't, I don't think you earn $210,000, bro. But, but again, I mean, you earn something obviously, yeah. but, but to me, it's like, I think a lot of the realtors, number one, need to be a little bit more, uh, diligent yeah. in their job. And again, I don't know if it's just the realtors I'm calling, but I've called several and it's like, and when I talk about this on some stages, sometimes they all start laughing like they all know like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we know well i don't get it so why don't you do that number one number two two hundred ten thousand dollars is too much maybe there's a cap yeah maybe you get three percent up to you know 20 g's like yeah. come on so no i don't i don't i'm not mad about it and you know it's unfortunate for them but at the end of the day man just because you got away with something for a period of time yeah. Right. And then it ends. Just be thankful you got away with it for a period of time. Yeah. The way I look at it is value creation versus value extraction. They've been extracting value. They've been extracting excess, excess value. And in any business, you can extract value for a period of time if you got a monopoly position. But eventually the market's going to correct. Eventually the rules are going to change. And eventually you're going to have to create the value that you're trying to extract. Well, it looks like it has. I don't know what the new rules are because I don't follow it, but. People ask my opinion. My opinion is bummer. Yeah. Like, hey, do something else. You know, you know how many other things there are to do? You know, you learn to sell. Yeah. Supposedly, you know how to sell, right? You sold the house. Because nine times out of 10, dude, they're not selling the house. No. They're showing the house. Have you ever bought a house that, so, that you didn't, really didn't want and the, and the realtor talked you into it? <laughs> Never. Okay. So again, did they want the house? You don't want the house. Did they sell it to you or do they no. just do the paperwork? Yeah. A lot of them are just doing the paperwork. They know their inventory. They're doing the paperwork and they, they're not earning that type of, of commission anyway. Yeah. Most when you, and when you think 3%, that sounds like a little bit, but you know, homes and prices and you know, you buy a $5 million house, bro. That's quite a bit. And not only that, it's 150 to the seller and 150 to the lister, isn't it? Yeah. And that's again, like my handcuffed by that. Like, yeah, you have to do that. That's bull. That's nonsense. That's collusion. Is collusion. That's what they got hit for. So good. The party's over. Party's over for real estate agents. Now, what's interesting is they're trying to do the same thing with wholesalers. Now, I know you're not a wholesaler. I always thought a you wholesaler were... was a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> so wholesaling, it's interesting. The NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has been pushing to try to ban wholesaling. Yeah. They say that it's extractive. I disagree with that. Yeah. What's interesting is on, on my side of things, you know, I worked with uh, a lot of the top wholesalers in the country. You've spoken on a lot of their stages. There's this, this view of wholesalers that uh, we're, we're stealing grandma's house. What they don't understand is the shit that we do. So the real estate agents make about 6%, okay? We actually do 10 times more work, right? We, we were just touring a house. You guys will probably see some footage from this. A complete horror's house, condemned. Uh, my co-host, Jack Keeps and I, he bought the house and we went in with hazmat suits to try to see if we find any treasures inside. We found some cash, we found some gold, found a coin collection, a bunch of stuff. We're not behind the scenes, we are fucking in the scenes today. In my scenes. newest acquisition. This is a true hoarder house like no one's ever seen before. This thing is untouched. There's dust, there's debris, there's trash, and there's most importantly, treasures. We're gonna find the treasures before my guys start construction to give back to the community and give these guys a true taste and a true smell of what they're trading. Billions of dollars of these houses on a daily basis. Let's do it. 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 Let's do
We're talking about somebody who's literally saved every single piece of mail they've ever received in their life. What is this right here? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god, this is the garage? Wow. You're a hoarder, where do you put this? Fucking everywhere. Okay, we did have a competition here. Who found what? I found this thing, and I don't know if it's Ooh. real. This looks like real it gold. Real. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I did not plan this, I swear to God. Was oh, it 250 wow. bucks? You know what I think we should do? Go to the pawn shop, see if that's yeah, real. See if, it's real. if it's real, we sell, we sell it. it. And then go hit the animal shelter. Let's go to the animal shelter. And you know what I love about this most? Zach, here over the next, like, what, month or two? How long? 45 practice? days to turn this whole 45 project. 45 days. This is going to be a beautiful house. It's going to come back to life. I want to invest if we're bringing back to life. Five, six thousand of these per month. That's the rewarding part. Would you buy a house or a storage unit? It was a house. It was well, a house that was they stacked up to here. There was 50 dog cages inside. But they it just was... left things behind? Was it a foreclosure? The lady passed away. The lady passed away, and then uh, whoever inherited the house, they, they couldn't sell with the real estate agent. They didn't care to go through it? No. Wow. Family photo was everything left behind. Super sad. Sad. Now, a real estate agent wouldn't know what to do that. The, the county condemned the house. Now, a wholesaler will maybe make 10%, but if yeah, you see these properties we're buying, we earn every goddamn percent of that 10%. And what's interesting is they're trying to beat us up because they're saying we're buying these houses too low. But if you actually look at the stats, I have a friend, David Olds, shout out to David Olds, Easy RA at Closings. He does the transaction coordination that closes these things. He says, even, even though we're buying these stuff, 50, 60, 70 cents on the dollar, half of all the properties we sign up don't get over the finish line. Even when we're buying 60, 70 cents on the dollar, guys like my co-host Zach, who's actually flipping these houses, he's like, you know what? There's just not enough margin here because there's so much cost, so much work that goes into turn them around. So the realtors have been pushing really hard in the last two months. They've uh, put through legislation in six different states to try to ban wholesaling. Well, again, I mean, I don't know the, the complete ins and outs of the industry, but to me, wholesaling is fine. Like, in other words, you want to go find houses, talk the owner who owns it into selling it for a certain price. That's between two grown adults. Now, again, I don't know if there's scammers and liars and cheats, yeah. but, you know, just the basic understanding I have of wholesaling is I go out and find a property, may not be listed yet, obviously. So I go out and find a property and I talk to the owner and I say, hey, I'll buy that house from you. And then you say, okay, I make you sign a contract and then I go find someone who wants to buy it for more than I just contracted it for. Yeah. That's wholesaling. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's a fundamental Why, why would they be part? trying to stop it? You know, you know what's funny is they always try to stop everything that, that, that's, that works. Yeah. You know, I don't know why they would try to stop that. They're saying you're trying, you're paying too little for the house. Well, that's between you and the homeowner. What do they right. care? Uh, the way I look at it is like, if, if two people agree on something, uh, why have the government try to fuck with that? Dude, let's say I'm in a situation of some kind and I, and I own my home and I want to sell it quickly. Now they're going to force me to go get a realtor, list it, wait for it to be shown, wait for, why can't I just call somebody or have someone approach me and I say, Hey, you can get this done and immediately they yeah. so they say, yeah, boom, I'll sell my house for a fraction of what it's worth if I want to. Yeah. Who's the government to say I can't? Yeah. Well, that's what they're trying to do. The South Carolina. Now, the interesting thing is assignment of contract is a fundamental part of every legal system, every modern legal system. So it's pretty protected. So they were trying to figure out how to do it. But the problem is they didn't have legal jurisdiction over wholesalers. They, they couldn't, they can't just go and ban assignment of contracts, it's a fundamental part of American law. So the first thing they said is, oh, you know what we got to do? We got to go get people licensed. We're going to make them get licensed. So in South Carolina, they passed this law. They said, we'll let you wholesale, but we just want to make sure you're following the code of conduct and everything. So you're going to get, you need to get licensed. So that was punch one. Everyone's like, okay, you know what? Sure. We'll go get licensed. Okay. And then they get their fee. NAR gets their fee every single month. Why is NAR in charge? Oh, they're the ones pushing this. Pretty hard. So they're lobbying. They're a big lobby group. They're lobbying for these laws to be enacted? I think what's going on is because of this lawsuit, they're losing a lot of realtors. So like, huh, how do we get more realtors? Huh, these wholesalers are pretty scrappy. 
let's go force all these wholesalers to get licensed. We'll get more fees in. Yeah. Generate a bunch more realtors. So that was punch one. And, and Jerry Norton, he was on our podcast last week. We were working together on setting up the National Association of Real Estate Wholesalers to try to fight back because we we're just like, okay, this is ridiculous. The way that they wrote these laws were written by people that obviously have never don't know anything about the industry. Uh, but the first punch was, hey, you got to get licensed. And then the second punch is now that you're licensed, now you're governed by the Real Estate Commission. Now you now they got jurisdiction over you. So the second punch is, oh, now that you're licensed, anyone that's licensed cannot wholesale. One, two punch. Now, my whole thing is the deals are still going to happen, right? These distressed homeowners, a real estate agent is not going to be able to serve them. So we can't do assignment of contract, but the deals are still going to happen. Just don't get licensed. So, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have to double close. So we're going to have to actually buy the property and then resell it. So one of the things we're doing, looking at doing at InvestLift is doing what we call transactional funding. So transactional funding will lend the money for a day, charge 1% fee. That's kind of the market rate. But then what happens is the cost of doing a deal is 1% higher. Now the businesses, they need to hit their margins, right? So we're going to probably plug in transactional funding on investor left. It'll be a button. Hey, you want to get a transactional funding? Click this button. We'll, we'll fund it 1%. And everyone's just going to go out, out to the homeowners and say, Hey, whatever we offered you last month, we're just going to offer you 1% less. Plus each time you transact a property, you got paid transfer, recordation tax, closing fees, all of that. So now there's all this additional cost to do the deal. Who's going to pay for it? The, the homeowner. Well, I think that's been known for a long time. Anytime the government gets involved, usually things get a little bit skewed. But you said only South Carolina? So South Carolina, that, that, that was one example. There's five or six states just in the last two months that have started pushing through laws to crack down on real estate wholesaling. You can't worry and cry about the rules they're making. You just need to learn them and play by them or quit playing the game altogether. Yeah. There's other games out there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why realtors are so stuck to being in, re in real estate. You know, a wholesaler, you know, hey, it was good while it lasted, but they shut it down. Okay, next. Yeah. Like, move on. Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, I, I feel for everybody. I feel for the realtors that don't get to, you know, get, I call it free money because that's <laughs> free money. Yeah. Um, you know, there's realtors probably going to listen to this, be like, man, I don't like this guy. He doesn't understand the work we get put in. Well, I understand you don't call me back. <laughs> and, and I know a lot of people that say the same thing. So realtors, and not only that, most realtors I know are broke. Like there's not a lot of successful realtors anyway. I wonder what the statistics are. Yeah. I think the stats are like the average realtor does less than one transaction per year. Okay. So the majority of real estate agents aren't affected anyway, because yeah. they weren't doing much anyway. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's like, I feel bad for them. I do. But I also know, dry your tears, little man. There's <laughs> 50 million other things you can do with those skill sets. Yeah. Same thing with wholesaling. I don't think there's anything wrong. I think a wholesaler earns his money. Why? Well, because you got to find the house, convince the buyer to sell it to you for enough of a, of a margin to make money right? You got to find the other person. So, I mean, dude, dude, that's, that's hustling. That's negotiating. Yeah. That's, that's putting deals together. Yeah. A real estate agent, it's not the same thing. Why? Because they're, they're in place where they're, you know, it's almost like you're forced to. Yeah. So it's not, it's not quite the same thing, but when the laws change and now they don't let you wholesale anymore, there's other things to do, man. Yeah. Dry your, dry your, dry tears, your tears, little man. I think what it's going to do is it's going to knock out the weak guys. Right. For real estate agents or, and for wholesalers. Or, yeah. Or and then the big guys will get more deals. They'll get the funding. Well, exactly. The real estate agents, say, the gonna, strong ones will build exactly. the case of why I'm more three percent. Or or they're going to well, what do you mean? You mean convince the homeowner to pay three percent? If if I if I if someone gave me, let's say I was interviewing a realtor and they're like, Hey, I want three percent, I'd be like, Okay, show me why. Build a business case. Okay, well I sell I'm able, let's say I, I, they represent me as a buyer. I'm a goddamn killer negotiator. So, so I'm able to get stuff 5% lower on average than what it's listed for. All right, I'll pay you 3% to get, if you can get me stuff 5% lower. Yeah, but that's crystal ball shit. You don't know. How do you know? How, how are you gonna if they had a track record, you'd have show to have, me all their no, sales. No, bullshit, dude. You'd have to have two people doing it to, to where I see, oh, this is your best offer. Oh, he did come in lower. That's, that's hypothetical nonsense. Is the new rule though, you can talk the homeowner into whatever they want? They're trying to, 
I have, I'm not a realtor, so I haven't gone through what the new rules are, but basically they're not allowed to collude, like high level, they're not allowed to collude to try to protect that 3% on the buyer side anymore. They were putting stuff at the systems, they're doing all this stuff to collude to anyone that's not doing 3%, we're not fucking doing their deals. Who? The lenders? Real estate agents. So if I'm a homeowner and I say, I don't want to pay 3%, they just say, well, then we're not going to sell your house. Can you basically, I? Uh, can, by the way, can I just sell it on my own? You can, yeah, Fisbo for sale by, by owner. There's nothing to prevent you. I mean, when we're wholesaling, that's what we're doing. We're buying directly from the True. homeowner. So, so maybe I'll change my view a little bit because if a real estate agent wants 3%, they can still get it. The law didn't say they can't have it. Yeah. They're, they're saying that the, that the homeowner has to opt in, so to speak. Yeah. Well then, again, find homeowners that are willing to pay it. Yeah. Do you want to make more money? I want money going back in the back like this. Do you want to make more money? Do you have deals sitting in your pipeline that is just not moving? Maybe it's a crap deal. Maybe you are. Crap. Let's sell your deal live on Wednesday. Bring your deal. Click the link below and we will sell it live and show you that it's possible on investor list, even though you can't do it. We can do it. We can help you bring your deal. Click on the link. Let's sell that deal and make some money. Money, 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 money. You're famous for building people's brands. You know, we, we did a lot of these interviews. And I talked to a lot of big guys in the space. We did one with Carlos Reyes. We did one with Andy Elliott. And as I was talking to these guys, um, Ryan Pineda, another guy, I'm like, you know, who should we talk to in this space? And your name came up a lot. And then we were over with Andy Elliott. I said, you know, what? you guys just blew up out of nowhere. What was it? And three different people gave me the same answer. They said, well, when we started working with Brad Lee. So you have this like unique talent where you're able to help these guys build these brands. Now, in the wholesaling space, it is a guru space. Every, you can't learn real estate wholesaling at university. No one teaches it. So when guys come into the industry and they want to learn, what do they do? They find some guy that's already done it, they sign up for their courses, and they take their training. So it really is a guru space. And a lot of these guys are trying to build their brands. We got tons of people are watching this right now that have film crews that are trying to get their Instagram going. Maybe they're at 5,000 followers. Maybe they're at 50,000 followers. Maybe they're at 500,000. When you're working with this guys, you know, you get them on your software, but it's more than just your software. There's a million different. I wish it was my software. <laughs> yeah. There's a million different learning education platforms out there. Right. But somehow consistently. Not really though. Yeah. There's a few good ones. No, 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 no. There's no, Lightspeed. No, I mean, if someone really l takes a look at the truth, yeah, the truth is all these other options are hosting solutions. Mm -hmm. They allow you to host your video on their platform. Yeah. Lightspeed is the only learning platform that's designed to get you to learn what's being hosted. In other words, the feature sets and the, the way the technology works, it's designed to get you to learn what's in it mm. the other ones allow you to host things in it so yeah. one is a hosting solution and one is a learning solution and when yeah. you say there's other learning solutions consume versus educate there's i mean again we could argue but there's one learning solution out there yeah lightspeed it's the only interactive training technology that's designed to get you to learn what's in it these other ones are just designed to get you to pay for it yeah and then view it there's a difference because again, I watch mixed martial arts, doesn't make yeah. me a black belt. Okay, to learn, you need the good content, you need the right way to do it, which is what the subject matter experts, the gurus provide. Yeah. Then you need repetition, which those other ones do not focus on. Or, a, or, I mean, people could say, well, you could watch it a million times. Yeah, but people don't. So you need to be almost forced to, yeah. and it needs to be tracked. But then you need practice, mm. right? There's no practice on those other ones to help you practice what it is you're learning and then there's no accountability so anyway maybe i'm just biased yeah because i'm the founder of lightspeed but i built the technology to make sure people learn not just host videos right. which is why a lot of the big names are on it because they really want to make an impact yeah i always say if you really want to determine whether that guru has good intentions of actually making an impact and training you what they supposedly know yeah then see if they're on lightspeed because if they're not on Lightspeed, I promise you they don't care whether you learn it or not. They care whether you pay for it or not. Yeah. So who do you want to learn from? Someone that really wants to change your life and make an impact? Or do you want to learn from someone that wants your 300 bucks or whatever it is? Yeah. So anyway, didn't mean to 
go off no, on a great. tangent. That's but great. there's only one learning system. Yeah. Mine. Now, when you see people that come on, you, you're dealing with all these guys. You got guys like Grant Cardone, Andy Elliott, Tony Robbins. Yeah. But then you also probably have like the small guy that is just getting started. Yes. What do you think the guys that are successful in this space, in the education space, are doing that's different than the guys that aren't successful? I would say at the end of the day, uh, the people that are successful are doing the work and the people that are not, are not. Yeah. It's not difficult to make money selling courses and training and coaching and mentoring. It's not difficult to do if you're willing to do the work. Andy's willing to do the work. Grant Cardone was willing to do the work. All the people that I've helped, you know, are, 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 or the famous ones. In other words, I get credit for building up Andy. Whoa, when you joined him, you blew up. Well, I bet you he would have blew up even without me. Why? Because he was doing the work. Grant Cardone, you know, when I met him, he was very similar to Andy, just training car salesman. Yeah. You know, and through my relationship with Grant and Andy and other people, I just influenced them to get outside of their little myopic industry. Yeah. So in other words, the car business alone, brother, there's more businesses than just the car business. You're down here in this little pond called the automotive space when you should be in the in a lake. And they're like, oh yeah, I never really thought about that. Yeah, I guess you're right. So they start reaching a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. I say, listen, your content is about you and it's about this. Your content needs to be you being authentic and giving out value. And then when people see, wow, I like what this guy's saying, well, now they're gonna go deeper and try and find your products. You're all you're doing is talking about products. Yeah. And and why don't you buy my products? People don't respond to that. So I just maybe influenced them a little bit. I think I get more credit than I deserve of that that I blew them up. It's not like, oh, you want to do it? Boom. Because then I would have blown everybody up. Yeah. I have clients that haven't blown up. Why? Which was was what was your question? They haven't blown up because they're not doing the work. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, in every case, why they're not doing the work. But more than likely, what I found is because deep down, they're too worried about everybody else's opinion. Yeah. And they're not willing to be authentically them. Yeah. And you can and you combine not really doing the work and not being authentic and you stay small. I remember when I was uh, first started doing content. Uh, you know, Ryan Panita, right? Yes. Yeah, you spoke on some of his stages, done podcasts. So I added Ryan Pena to my board. At the time, I had 300 followers on Instagram. This is just like a couple of years, three years ago. I had probably 300 followers on Instagram. It was my private account. It was just my friends and family. And he joins my board. He's, he's like, Robert, what the, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you got to start pumping out content. I'm like, I'm a software guy. Like, these guys don't aren't going to be interested in anything I have to say. What am I going to do? Talk about building software? Yeah, but see, he's like, dude, just document. Don't try to create, just document. Don't create, you know, Gary V says that all the time. He's like, just start pushing out a video per day. And we did that. I'm like, all right, I'll do a 90 day test. Brought in Luigi. We actually flew out to Dubai. We had just celebrated doing uh, our first, I don't know, 10 million or so. We flew the whole team out to Dubai, rented $5 million of cars, got a big mega mansion, rented the penthouse of the Burj Khalifa. And we just pumped out a bunch of crazy content. I started posting it. And the first thing that happened was I got lit up, lit up by my family and a lot of my close friends. They're, they're like, who the hell do you think you are? See, posting that's, stuff that's, with see, Ferraris that's, that's and Lambos. That's classic as to what happens. Yeah. And, and you're, you're at a classic example of what I'm talking about. Before you did it, you said, no one wants to hear me. Okay. That is a, limited self-worth yeah so in, to increase your net worth you increase your self-worth you got to figure out how to get around that which you did you said screw it i'll just do it anyway then stage two everyone wants to come in there and tell you well why are you an idiot and most people will now withdraw they'll stop because yeah. of their family and because of their friends saying who do you think you are quit showing off yeah. you're, 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 you look like an idiot and then all of a sudden people because deep down they're worried about everyone else's opinion. So they just stop having their own yeah. and, and, and they change and they slow down and they stay small. So again, what keep going, what happened? Yeah, they're so like, you started, oh, you, you just spent all this money. Is this very smart of you? You just 
you just started making money. Now you're spending all this money to show off. I'm like, dude, I already, I already had the trip booked. Yeah, but what did you I say, had, though? I, I wanted to reward my team. That was my goal. So I wanted right, to reward so my team. So you're explaining yourself. Yeah. Uh, Why so, didn't you say, this is an investment, son? Yeah, it was an investment. It was an investment with my team. And I'm like, hey, you know what? If we're going to start doing content, this is the time to do it. And it, what's crazy is Ryan was right. In the first 90 days, we tracked all our sales. We made over $300,000 just through Instagram DMs. And that paid for the whole goddamn trip. So the whole trip was free. Well, the whole trip should have been a write-off anyway. It was a write-off. It's a double. But building a brand is an investment. It's not yeah. wasting money. And unfortunately, we live in a society where they they glamorize the high life. Yeah. You know, lifestyle. Yeah. They want to ride the yachts and live vicariously through through us with the Ferraris and the private jets because they don't get to or they're not going to because they have that limited scarcity mindset. And so it's an investment. I think everybody, especially realtors, needs to build a personal brand. Mm -hmm. If you look at lawyers, most of the top lawyers have billboards and TV commercials. Yeah. That's how you know them. That's why they're the top. It's the brand. It's the attention. So if I'm in real estate, I'm building a brand, period. And if I can afford to, I'm going to Dubai, I'm renting the yacht, I'm bringing the family, I'm bringing the friends, I'm filming it all, I'm bringing the crew. Yeah. That costs money. Yeah. And when someone says, oh, you're showing off, dude, that's limited thinking. It's not showing off, it's investing. Yeah. And by the way, if I've got the money to invest and most people telling you what you're doing wrong don't, well then who are they to determine what you should be doing anyway. Maybe they should be doing what you're doing. Yeah, we. I was looking, we just did this new lead form and one of the, we just launched it, and now it's application-based. We should let people buy our lower product without applying. Now, we got too many noobs coming in, so we're like, no, we're gonna do application-based. If they don't need our product, we're not gonna sell it to them, even if they wanna buy it. Sorry, come back in six months. And one of the things that I noticed is we looked at, you know, one of the questions is, how do you hear about us? 40 to 50% of all of the leads that we co that come in every single month, they say, we, I heard about you from YouTube or from Instagram. And I don't have a big following. I got 70,000 followers. You got you know, a million. I'm like, so now I see the power of it. A good friend of mine, he says, there's four ways to gain leverage. Uh, capital, code, collaboration, and content. And some people will get the first three down. They miss out on the content. Because we sit here, we film for an hour, and then there's going to be thousands of hours of watch time. And then the other thing that Ryan taught me too, this is right after we filmed with you, we, we did a podcast with him. He had this really interesting insight where he said, how do you build trust? There's only two ways to do it. There's trust transfer, right? Um, you know, if I introduce you to someone, I'm like, hey, this guy's a really good guy. You should maybe have him on his podcast. You know, if you trust me and I give an intro, you're probably gonna respond to that guy, at least check it out, right? Because there's trust transfer. The second way is is time. And when people sit there watching your, your your Instagram or your YouTube every day and you're giving them value, build up trust. And then when those leads come in, we, we found that if they just mention the word YouTube, a regular close rate on a lead is about 40%. But if they've watched our YouTube content, the close rate's over 90%. It's almost double because they spent so much time with us. Not only that, I mean, the content's probably doing the selling. Yeah. So for people that are just getting started, like let's say someone's watching this, they're a realtor, they're a wholesaler, whatever. What advice do you have to someone that is just getting started in content? What, what would you do? If you had to start over, we zero out your Instagram account, we zero out your YouTube, how would you get started? Well, it's easier said than done, but I would ultimately, you know, drop the ego yeah. and, and, and become as authentic and real as you can. Meaning if you have bad habits and you have you know, gambling addiction and you have marital problems and you have issues, again, I would suggest you fix them, but who cares? Yeah. Be you. See, most people are trying to create content when they need to be the content. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you are- That's powerful. Well, Don't create the content, be the content. Well, yeah, I mean, if people do it right, they are the content. Yeah. And I stumbled across it because I was doing everything to, you know, what, what do people want to hear? What's going to make me sound good? What's going to make me look cool? You know, what are some good nuggets I can drop? You know, and how can I look cool? You know, and I got followers, but not really. One time I was being pestered while I was handling multiple things. 
and I was being pestered by my camera guy yeah. talking about we have to make content. And you know that requires thought and almost acting, if you will, yeah. if you're doing it wrong. And so I basically said, dude, just turn the camera on. I am the content. And I was being a smart ass. I went back to doing what I was doing. Boom, 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 boom. And sure enough, that footage went to the drive. Editors got a hold of it. Chop, 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 chop. Reaction. Why? Because they were watching a real dude do real things. He wasn't acting. He wasn't talking you know, to be heard. He was being himself. Yeah. That's what I was doing. I was talking to employees. People would walk in. I would just, I, I, I forgot the camera was even there. Yeah. So ultimately what I would suggest, if people can do that, because most people can't, why? Because they have a low self-esteem. They have low self-worth. They have insecurities and they're around the wrong people. And the yeah. wrong people will stop you from doing what you feel like doing. Most people that I say, why don't you post this? They say, oh no, I mean, what if my friends see it? Well, again, I mean, if, if you're ashamed of what you're, what you're posting and you're posting you, yeah, which means now you're ashamed of you, well then fix you first. Don't worry about content, go fix you. In fact, why don't you film yourself fixing you? Yeah. So other people that know they need to be fixed mm. now want to see how you're doing it. Yeah. And boom, now your shit blows up. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, even if you have issues and problems that you would normally be embarrassed about and not want to share because you think it would harm you, it will actually help you. Yeah. People want real people. People want authenticity. So my advice to somebody in real estate, in freaking wholesaling, in politics, I don't care what you're doing, is drop the act. Yeah. Be you and let somebody film you being you. If you're in a situation where there's nothing to film because you're boring, you're not doing anything. Start doing something. Start doing some things. Well, what do I do? Well, again, now you're starting to, again, don't ask, don't ask someone else what to do. Well, what are people going to like? See, nope, nope. You're doing it wrong again. Don't worry about what people like. What do you like? What do you want to do? Well, I just want to sit here and play video games. You ever heard of Twitch? Yeah. Dude. Billions of people are watching dipshits sit there and play video games. Yeah. Okay. So if that's you, brother, then play video games. This is my point. Yeah. Be you is my advice. Be the content. Quit trying to create the content and become the content. And if you're sitting there literally staring at a wall with nothing going on and you're filming it, dude, listen, I, I would recommend figure out something to do, but don't ask everybody else what they think it should be. What do you feel? Who are you? What do you want? And if you haven't done that work, brother, I would say do that work first. Mm. Like figure out who you are, what you believe, and don't be afraid to say it. Yeah. Like again, I mean, people can ask me all kinds of questions. I get interviewed all the time when people say, hey, do you mind if we talk about, listen, I don't care what you talk about. Why? Well, because number one, I'm not unethical, so you're not gonna catch me saying something. You, you're not gonna get me because again, I'll, I'm honest. Yeah. I'm not racist. Yeah. I'm not chauvinist. I'm not a bad guy. Yeah. You're never going to catch me being a bad guy. Cause I'm not one. Yeah. And if you ever catch me being a bad guy, well then that's me brother. So yeah. if, if you see something you don't like me saying or doing or thinking or acting, well then unfollow because guess what? If you do it right, you're going to attract the people that you should be attracting and you're going to repel the people that you should be repelling. And that's the way the, that's the way it works. But so many people are, are afraid of the hate. They never find the love. Yeah. There's a clip. Boom. Because I mean, people got to understand that. Yeah. You're so worried about what everybody's going to think that you don't find everyone that loves what you think. Yeah. So quit worrying about what everybody else thinks. Start figuring out what you think. What do you believe? And then film it, mm -hmm. put it out there and don't worry about it. That's my advice. If someone wants to really build a brand, I mean, I could go deeper, like be consistent. Yeah. You know, you have to put out content Yeah. and that's another value of filming you being you, you, you get 10, 12 hours of footage every day. Go try to create content, dude. You're lucky to get an hour. Yeah. We filmed for 12 hours the other day and cut it down to 20 minutes. Yeah, but again, if you go look at that footage, bro, I wasn't acting. I didn't say anything no, because the, 
We were just doing what we would have done if there were no yeah. cameras there. Now, well, we went there with the intention of, of filming. That's not that's not bad. That's not a that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, get a camera, be you. Yeah. Don't be afraid of of people's opinions, and put a lot of it out there. Yeah. That's my advice. Everyone will build a brand that way. Yeah, great advice. And the funny thing too is like. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, but like the haters, like I don't want to get haters. Uh, every time I get a video that blows up, you know why it blows up? Because I haters. got the haters come in. The oh, I love it when the trolls come in. The haters, you know are, the, the the haters are like the fuel. Oh yeah, they come in. It's like throwing gas on your content. They come in, they start shit talking. And you know what happens? Your real followers that like your shit start defending. And then they got a goddamn fucking war going down in the comments. There's no better goddamn way to blow up content than get some haters. You know, I, I think that this is why Andrew Tate blew up. Well, that's he not understood. why. That, 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 that was an ingredient. He blew up because he enlisted thousands of people to post his content from their from their accounts, accounts, which no one figured out. And that was the secret. Yeah, because you couldn't go anywhere without seeing this ball headed dude everywhere that, that had a that had a, you know, wise ass comment and that shock and awe that that was a little bit of shock it. and awe plus plus mass distribution but if he didn't have the thousands of people posting his content that probably wouldn't have happened the way it did yeah i mean he still would have grown why well because of what he said and what he thinks and what he believes and guess what he's not afraid to say it why well he's probably confident because he's a four-time champion kickboxer so he's not afraid yeah you know mixed martial arts tends to give people confidence if they're right. good at it <laughs> and then they start talking because they're not you know afraid of the repercussions not only that he's intelligent not only that he's got his brother you know all the ingredients are there there's a lot of people in the world that could blow up just like andrew tate they just don't because their belief system is nobody wants to hear what i have to say well i don't have hundreds of millions of dollars well, I'm not, I'm not that cool. Well, again, step one, go get some confidence, right? Fix your self-worth because you're never going to outperform your own self-image. So you need to raise your own self-image. Yeah. And then people come around, well, that's conceit, brother. You want, you're, you're teaching people to be conceited. Valuing yourself is not conceit. Yeah. Okay. Self-love is not bad. You need to like yourself. And that's the problem with most people. They don't like themselves. I mean, a lot of guys, um, you know, at events and stuff, people come up to you, you want to shake your hand, and, you know, they got the slope back shoulders. Dude, it happened downstairs. Over shoulders. You said you were going to send me a code to get in? Yeah. I walked up to the door, and two people opened the door. I thought they were with you. They live here. Yeah. A lot of pictures. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. Well, this building ain't that secure. Celebrities can walk in. <laughs> Not that I'm a celebrity, but they recognize me, so that kind of makes me a celebrity in their eyes, but it, it happens all the time. Yeah. And the guys that don't have a lot of confidence, do you have, how, 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 you got, you're the king of confidence. Like you're the king of cool. That's kind of your brand. You got the whole fucking cool vibe, confident vibe going on, not giving a fuck, just saying how things are. What do you say to the guys that maybe don't have that level of confidence? How do you build confidence in someone? Well, number one, I think, I think it's not that I don't give a fuck. It's, it's actually the opposite. Yeah, I do give a fuck. I think more people need to start giving a fuck, right? But I give a fuck about what I think and what I feel. A lot of people, again, they don't they don't give a fuck about what they think and what they feel. They give a fuck about what everybody else does. I stopped doing that because it doesn't pay. Yeah, it's not like you cannot make everybody happy, bro. If you really think about this in a common sense manner, think about this. Do you believe you can make everyone happy? No. And everyone would agree, common sense, of course not. If you can't make everyone happy, well, then who are you going to pick? Because if you pick these people, well, then they're mad. If you pick yeah. them, then they're mad. If you pick mom, then siblings are mad. If you pick siblings, then parents are mad. If you pick society, then freaking, you know, other people are mad. So you're never going to make everybody happy. And once you realize that, you go, okay, well, then I got to pick who I'm going to make happy. What most people don't understand is that you are an option in that equation. So if you put you in the equation, who are you going to make happy? The only logical answer is me. Why? Because I'm me. 
Yeah. Like, I know what makes me happy. Right. I'm going to be around me forever. Yeah. Like, I want to be happy. Like, holy shit. Once people realize, dude, I can choose me. And now these guys say, well, well wait a minute. That's that's arrogance. That's conceit. That's selfishness. Oh, well, now again, I'm, I'm going to give them the power. No, 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 no. Forget what they say. What do I think? I don't think it's unfair. I don't think it's stupid. In fact, I think it's only common sense because I'm the only one that I can control. I can't control you. I can't determine whether you're happy or not. And I can't make everyone happy. So when they introduce themselves as an option, it's just the only logical answer. And I found that logical answer. I'm gonna make me happy. I hope it, I hope it makes you happy. Yeah. I want the whole world to be happy, but I can't control whether you're happy or not. You control that. So if I'm making you angry, is it me making you angry or is it actually you making yourself angry? Think about it. Yeah. Can I make you angry? No. I can't make you angry, bro. And I can't make you happy. Only you can. So yeah. once people realize, oh shit, that's the truth. Oh, well, dude, I've been an idiot. I'm worried about all these people and what they think. Yeah. I just stopped doing that. So again, it's like, it's not that I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I do give a fuck. Yeah. That's the secret. I give a fuck about what I think. Most people don't give a fuck about what they think. Yeah. They give a fuck about what everybody else thinks. So so I come across as, man, he's cool. He don't give a fuck what everybody thinks. Okay. There you go. That's what makes you cool, I guess. Yeah. Don't stop giving a fuck what everybody thinks. Yeah, there's a great book. One of my favorite books. You ever read The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck? Yes. Goddamn great book. There's a lot of good books out there. That's another thing. People want to ask me all the time, you know, how do I how do I do this and how do I do that? And how do I do this and how do I do that? And usually it's success based, money based, improvement based. Yeah. And I say to them, number one, the reason you're getting what you're getting is because you're doing what you're doing. Make sense? Yeah. So if you want to change what you're getting, you got to change what you're doing. Logical? Yeah. If you want to change what you're doing, you have to change what causes you to do what you do. What causes you to do what you do and think like you think and act like you act and choose what you choose? You know? Yeah. What? Looks like you think you know. Do you know or don't you know? I'll give you I the think answer. it's your programming. They're like, who, who are you around? That's, like, that's, that's the cause. The reason you do these things are your beliefs. Your beliefs, It's yeah. what you believe. And what I mean by that, your programming. I, I look programming. at humans as kind of like computers. Like everyone goes through a string <laughs> of experiences and each of those experiences is, is either rewarding or punishing you. Yeah. And well, who well, you're yeah. around is rewarding or punishing. And the information that's going to your brain like you're downloading information all day long into your brain. That's that's your programming. Yeah, your programming. But then, you choose what to believe and what not to believe. That's true. And at the end of the day, whether you believe it or not doesn't make it true. So your belief system is made up of your environment and your upbringing and, and you know, all, all kinds of factors. Yeah. That's your programming. But your programming causes you to create your beliefs. Your beliefs determine your actions and your behavior mm -hmm. so if you want to change what you're getting you have to change what you're doing if you want to change what you're doing you have to change your beliefs period so if you want to change your beliefs there's only one way to do it there's only one way that you can change your beliefs you know what that is tell me new information yeah that's it yeah think about it if you believed fire didn't burn you stick your hand in the fire you feel pain, that's new information. Mm -hmm. Your beliefs change. doesn't matter. It's the same with everything. If you get no new information, then your beliefs will always be remain. So you have to get new information. Yeah. So, hey, how do I be, become more confident? Get new information. Yeah. Hey, how do I become rich? Get new information. Yeah. Because everybody is new information away from getting everything they want in life. Yeah. They're also one relationship away. So the reason why people don't have what they want is because they don't know something Yeah. or they don't know someone. Yeah. Because if you knew the right people, you get the right information. You'd have everything. No, you could have, you know, you get loans, you get 
You know, yeah. daddy gave him $10 million. Well, he had a, he had the right daddy then. Like, right. like, dude, why are you blaming him? At the end of the day, you don't know someone you need to know. Yeah. Or you don't know something you need to know. Mm. And it may be a combination of both. You don't know the yeah. right information and you don't know the right people. Yeah. And again, I mean, like, when you think about it, it's like, so how do you fix that? Seek information on a regular basis. It's called read books. Yeah. Like the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Like as a man thinketh. Like think and grow rich. Yeah, like right. like uh, the four agreements. Like, you know, I can give you a million of them. Yeah. We'll link some down below, by the and, way. Guys. And start shaking people's hands and building relationships. Start introducing yourself. And when I ask people, how many new relationships did you start today? Mm. They think and they're like, none. Yeah. And they'll go months, same friends, same family, same circle, same environment, same influence, Stuck. same information. Why can't I succeed? Same friends, same family, same yeah. influence, same information. That's why. So yeah. it's like once people realize, oh, dude, that makes total sense. Well, I need new information and I need new friends. Yeah, before, Period. Before we started filming, I was telling you how, why I made the decision to move down here after, you know, we met last November. I was down here for one month filming content, meeting people, building new connections, increased my monthly revenue 70% in one month. And I was like, shit, what the hell am I doing in Puerto Rico trying to save 22% on capital gains when I could just make more goddamn money? You're down there with everybody else with a scarcity-based mindset. Scarcity mindset, scarcity mindset. And, and by the way, don't get me wrong. If you can, like, there's people that love the beach and you make yeah. that kind of savings. There's, there's it makes great sense reasons people. to go down there. I'm just saying, yeah. like, you're, you're, you're down there to save money. Otherwise, you'd never be there. Yeah. You're there for the wrong reason. Yeah, and the result of the move here, what's interesting is we did in Q1, two-thirds of the growth that we did all of last year. Literally just in the first quarter. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And why? Because of your, I'm downloading the right information. I'm meeting the right connections. I've met six billionaires since I got here. Hey, is it is it? legal to have your business entity there but you're here doing business but sending it through there there are some ways to do that in certain sectors because maybe i'd do that i'd have my business yeah. there i'd be here sending it all there yeah there's some but ways I'd to get here. some tax advantages dude i don't uh, care jerry's the one to talk to about that yeah i don't care about saving taxes yeah so i have to live somewhere i don't want to live just make more money yeah, it, dude, I want to live where I want to live. Yeah, live where you want to live and just make more money. Just live where you want to live. Like, yeah. dude, do what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, man, money is just, you know, options. Yeah. So literally, you're you're going down there to save more money so you can have options. Yeah. Because money's options. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It's options. So you're limiting your options so you can get more money so you can have more options. Doesn't make sense. But you're limiting your options. Like yeah. you already can can live wherever you want like like right now choose where do you want to live and it doesn't matter someone says well he's got money dude you can choose to live wherever you want like if i were a homeless individual why would i live in alaska where it's cold as hell <laughs> i'm gonna go to california for sure why the weather the, the 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 rules are designed to protect me i can sleep wherever i want i can go to literally beverly hills pitch a tent in a beautiful yeah. area I can freaking, you know, I'm going to California. So a homeless person gets to live in California and you're successful living in Puerto Rico to save money. Yeah. It makes no sense when you think about it. Yeah. Unless, of course, you enjoy Puerto Rico. Because from what I hear, there's certain areas that are beautiful. Yeah. Toronto Beach. Absolutely. Yeah, like, incredible. Dude, if you enjoy it and you save taxes, well, that's a bonus. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't move anywhere to save taxes. I know last time we talked, you were thinking about spending some more time here. Yeah, well, Andy and his wife, or Jackie, are, are like buying up the whole area and they're, you know, they've got like a whole campus started. Yeah. So they're building me a, 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 an office. Yeah. A whole entire office. Badass. Sick. And they're, and they're like, dude, you know, we want you here. And I'm like, you know, I like Scottsdale. Yeah. It's like Vegas without the casinos. Yeah. Now, I like Vegas, too. My wife loves Nashville. So we have a house in Nashville and a house in Vegas, and I have an office in Vegas. So more than likely, within a year or two, I will have a house here, and I will be between here and Vegas and Nashville. Yeah, one in 10, I've heard that one in 10 residents of Scottsdale is a millionaire. 
Well, then it's I won't, I won't fuck you. up the stats. Yeah, <laughs> you can bring them up. Yeah, so I think you're 100% right about this whole like leveling up your mindset. You know, I always tell people, I'm like, a lot of people try to make a million dollars. Instead of trying to make a million dollars, what you got to do first is build the mindset of becoming a guy that can make a million dollars. Download the, that mindset first, right? Uh, once you make $10 million, there's another mindset. Now you got to start talking to guys that are doing 100 million. Start downloading their mindset and become the person that can make $100 million. Once you want to break into the three commas club and become a billionaire, like that's what I'm trying to work on right now is I've got a pretty good net worth, but I, I've always told people, I always joke, I'm like, I've, I'm a billionaire, I just don't have my money yet, right? So now I'm trying to like make connections with guys that have done it, that built billion dollar companies, download their mindsets and then adopt those kind of operating models. What's interesting too, is people think like the billionaires work a lot. They don't, you know, like it's like, as you go up, you're just, it's more mental, right? You're just, you're operating at a higher level, right? You're just leveling up, leveling out. You get more resources, you're leveraging, you're make, just making more strategic decisions. I was at a JP Morgan party. Yeah, you gotta be a hundred million net worth individual just to bank with them, with private wealth. And someone made this interesting comment. They're like, the super, super wealthy, all they do is spend their time in leisure, building connections with other people and thinking about how to make more money. And then when they say, hey, here's the path <coughs> we're going down, here's what we're going to do, they just speak it and it comes to fruition. Like that's that's the ultimate, right? But you got to start somewhere. Like for the guys that are just getting started, how do you go find those guys that are going to have those operating models? How do you get their time? Well, again, I mean, these are questions where if you just ask yourself the question, you'll come up with the answer. Like, how do you meet these guys? Yeah. Go where they're at. Yeah. Introduce yourself. But I wouldn't be worried about meeting them until, the, you know, I, I, I've met myself. Because, again, I've seen people get in rooms with, quote, unquote, successful people, and, they, and they're awkward. Yeah. And they stand there being silent, and they're not prepared to introduce themselves. They're not interesting in any way. They're not opinionated in any way. They don't have anything to offer. So I'm thinking, what does it matter that you're in the right room if you're the wrong person? Yeah. So similar to what you were just saying, I would go worry about yourself first. Yeah. Get to a point where you don't care whether someone's a billionaire or not. Because that's me. Like you put me right now, if, if, if you had all the billionaires up here, Bezos is right there, Elon Musk's right there, you know, Fink's over there, you know, anybody. Tim Cook's here, Oprah Winfrey's over there, like all the yeah. billionaires. I don't care. I'm walking around, walking up. What's up? What's your name? Yeah. Oh, dude, what do you do? How did you make a billion dollars, bro? Like, yeah. I wouldn't be going, oh, I better act like something I'm not now. Yeah. Now that I've reached a room where everybody's far more successful than I, I better act like something else. Hello, sir. Well, I better not say anything or they'll discover that I don't, that I shouldn't be here. Well, why? Yeah. I don't believe I shouldn't be here. Yeah. There's the difference. So I'd go get that mindset first because otherwise you'll get in the room, you won't say anything, you won't build any relationships. Mm -hmm. So what's the purpose? Have intellectual humility. I remember- uh, The purpose so, of getting in those rooms is to build relationships. Build relationships. And how do you build relationships? Do you know? Starts with an introduction. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have the nerve to introduce yourself, you're kind of screwed. And then secondly, it's providing value. Yeah. You want to provide value. That's how you build a relationship. Yeah. Because everybody's listening to the radio station WIFM. Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? Yeah. When I ask you what you do for a living, really what I'm saying is what can you do for me? Yeah. Why do I care what you do for a living unless it can serve me? Yeah. Why do you think people ask? They want to know if they can get something from you. They ask you what you do for a living. Like, oh, you think you're just in a networking event and someone's like, what do you do? Yeah. No, it's what can you do for me is really what they're asking. So if you think about it, mm. how many people have asked you what you do for a living? Now yeah. start thinking what they're really saying is what can you do for what me? Can you do for me? So why don't you answer it that way instead of saying, oh, I'm a realtor. Yeah. Say what you really do for people. Like, what can you do for me will elicit a different response. Mm. So if I were to say to any of these guys like you, what do you do for a living? I'm the 
best guy. No, to you're play. listening. That's not fair. What would you normally say? Uh, I'm a video editor. See? That's what people would say. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. But if I said, hey, what can you do for me? What would you say? I can make you the best videos in the world. Yeah. And then if you, you know, polish that up a little bit, you, you end up telling me what I'll get from it. Because what people want is, what can you do for me? I can make you famous. I make people famous yeah. through what I do. You know, at the end of the day, most people that enter those rooms, they're not prepared to enter those rooms. Yeah. What's wrong with, you know, going out and doing something for yourself first? Go build something, go do something, or at least get an opinion. Yeah. Because again, I've, I've met people in those rooms and I've been one of those people in those rooms where they're far past where I'm at, but everybody wants to talk to me and be my friend. Yeah. Why? Because, dude, once you get to that level, dude, everybody's got money. Like, that's not going to be The numbers impressive. don't even matter. It doesn't matter point. anymore. It's, it's who just are you? What do you believe? What do you think? Yeah. And then people are going to resonate with that or not. So if you don't even know who you are and you don't even know what you think, why are you worried about being in that room? The fact that you're worried about being in that room tells me you probably shouldn't be in that room. Mm -hmm. Because I don't seek to be in those rooms. I find myself in those rooms. Yeah. Now, should you, if I'm your mentor, get in those rooms? Absolutely. But be, why? Well, because, dude, that's, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to network with other like-minded individuals and you want to continue to meet new people. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's smart. But, well, you just said you shouldn't want to. Again, read between the lines. What I'm saying is prepare yourself first. So when you get in those rooms, you're not standing there awkward with nothing to offer. Yeah. Because to build relationships, you need to provide value. Yep. If every time you showed up, you're bringing me royal release, pretty soon I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking for Robert Winsley. Hey, where's Winsley coming? <laughs> When's he coming next? And you call, hey, I was popping in Vegas. Can I swing by? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're up at this party. Yep. All right, I'll swing by there. Now you're walking in with me and a bunch of other badasses. Yeah. Why? Well, because, dude, I equate you with value, Yeah. with benefit. Yep. See what I'm saying? That's how you provide value. So you have to provide value. How are you going to provide any value if, if, if you have nothing to offer? Mm -hmm. And by the way, sometimes value is insight. Sometimes value is perspective. Sometimes value is time. It's not just money. People are like, I don't have any money. It, it's not just money. It's like, go do the work and start becoming you. Start liking yourself. Then go get in the rooms. Yeah. Because then you'd argue with a billionaire. I'd argue with a billionaire. Yeah. If I'm sitting here right now and Elon Musk is over there and he says something that I think is completely stupid, I'd be like, dude, what are you talking about? I don't go, oh, he's got a billion dollars. He must be smarter than me. He must have a, his, his opinions more valuable than mine. Yeah. I don't think that way. Yeah. Everybody else might think his opinion is more valuable than mine because he has a billion dollars, but I don't. Yeah. Why? Because I don't care what everybody else thinks. Right. I care about what I think. Okay. Unless I'm paying you for your advice, keep it, bitch. That's yeah. my opinion. Well, I don't want your advice unless I pay you for it. And that's right. how you can tell if I want it, by the way. Yeah. All those people wanting to give me advice on social media. Dude, did I pay you for that advice? No. Nope. Oh, well, there's a good indication that I didn't fucking want it. <laughs> so why are you wasting time giving me your advice? Yeah. Now, if someone says, hey, can I offer you my advice? I always say, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, you want my opinion? 100%. I want everyone's opinion. Well, you just said you didn't, you didn't care about what they think. See, again... They're not listening. They're trying to hear something that I'm not saying. I want new information. And you have to realize everyone you meet knows something you don't. Yeah. I want to know what you know. Yeah. I want to know what he knows. I don't care how much money one's got. I want to know what they know. Yeah. So when I talk to a dude that's freaking, you know, making 60 grand a year, I don't look at that person like, oh, what, what, what can you teach me? Yeah. Yeah which I think deep down is why people say I'm cool. Why? Cause dude, I'm like, people say down to earth all the time. If that's what that means, dude, it's because dude, I don't care who people are and what they've achieved. I don't discriminate financially. But if, you know, again, if I'm dealing with someone with no money, nine times out of 10, they have no money because they have the wrong mindset and it's their, you know, their scarcity. Mm -hmm. They're, they're hanging around the wrong people. They have no interests. They don't have any, they don't, they're in other words, like 
I just gravitate towards people with money. Why? Because they're more abundant yeah. mindset. Right. They've got interesting stories. Yeah. They're like fun. They're out doing shit. Yeah. So when people are like, well, how do I get in those rooms? Start doing shit. Just start doing shit. Yeah. Just go out and do shit. And guess what? If you stop worrying about being in those rooms, the next thing you know, you'll you'll find yourself in those rooms. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's where people aren't. They're not doing anything. Yeah. And they're afraid to to ask. Yeah. You know, if I thought you could help me, bro, I would have no problem saying, "Hey, Wesley, can you introduce me to that dude over there?" Because yeah. like, freaking, bro, I need. I need his help on something. I wouldn't say, oh, I don't want to come across like I'm needy. Yeah, uh, nine times out of the 10, I remember when I graduated from the school, I just started reaching out to people asking for informational interviews. I was thinking about a million different things like, should I go to architecture school? Should I go into banking? Should I go, million different things. I just started reaching out to people asking, hey, can I do a 50 minute informational interview? And some what, of those turned into four hour interviews. What'd you and, end up going to school for? Economics and finance. Are you using it? So no, you know, your answer not is much. no, you ain't using yeah, it. Yeah, I ain't using okay, it. Hey, when are people gonna realize, dude, those institutions, yeah. scams. Scam. If you're gonna go to those places, go for the relationships. Yeah. Don't go for the education. That's a, the bonus. Yeah. Just like Puerto Rico, dude, saving taxes is the bonus. Yeah. Don't go to save taxes. Yeah. You go to, you go to university for relationships. Mm -hmm. The education is a bonus. You forget it all. And not only that, you're yeah. not even more than likely going to use it. Yeah. Well, I was a doctor, and yes, I'm using it. Well, obviously, if you need a degree for something you want to do. Yeah, you want to become a doctor, go to school. But there's a lot of people in, in university that, like, they shouldn't be there. Now, I didn't go, but I didn't know this. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to learn nothing there. I'm going to go out and learn it here. You know, I just didn't go. Yeah. So now that I look back, I'm like, ha, see? Yeah. Now, most people don't realize this, but I have a couple PhDs. PhDs. Yeah. And masters. All right. I feel like there's a punchline coming. No. Honor. I have, I have two, no, I have two actual PhDs and like probably, I don't know, at least six or seven master, master's degrees. On the streets. No, in my office, like they work for me. Ah. So I always say, look, you don't need a degree if you yeah. can hire one. Yeah. I, I used to, I was telling these guys the other day, I was like, I used to obsess over trying to learn coding. I was like, all my free time I was learning coding, data science. After a while, I was just like, you know what? This is a commoditized skill. Why would I try to become good at this if I can just hire the best goddamn engineer? So I brought in my co-founder, Dimitri. He's got a 195 IQ as a chess grandmaster. I'm like, perfect, boom. Don't need to learn coding. Uh, on law, I had really good grades in law. They were trying to get me into the Harvard Law School, trying to recruit me. And I was like, you know what? That's five fucking years and a lot of student debt. That's half a million bucks. And do I really want to do that? No, screw it. Now I got the best legal team in the entire world. I have the same Go lawyers that do law for Google and Facebook. Just hire for it. Find your weaknesses. And uh, I just built. I know you got to head out pretty soon. Uh, for anyone that is watching this, any final insights that we can get from Bradley? What's like, we, we talked a lot about like downloading mindset, connecting to those people, figuring out what their mental models are, instilling them into your brain and downloading those operating systems. What, if you could sum up the Bradley operating system of how you operate, how you look at the world, what, what would that be? Well, those are multiple questions. How I look at the world is through rose colored lenses because I wake up with extreme gratitude where most people don't. I realize that getting the day itself is more valuable than anything I could achieve in the day. Yeah. So like people are like, what do you mean? The fact that I get today is more valuable than anything I could achieve today. If I made $5 million today, mm. wow, that's better than waking up. No, no, I'd rather wake up than get five yeah, mil. It's powerful. Okay. So I wake up with an incredible gift. So my, my enthusiasm for life is above most because of the gratitude. So that's how I look at the world. You know, I don't think there's a, a there's no such thing as a bad day as long as you have one. You know, there, it could, there could be a challenging day. You know, there could be a character building day. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. So gratitude is something that I, I highly promote. 
And then secondly, you know, I, I simplify things. I don't complicate things. Maybe because I didn't go to college, yeah. you know, maybe because I'm not university educated. You know, I, I don't, I don't complicate things. I simplify things. Yeah. I like to simplify. So here's the simplicity of success, if that's what you want to call it. Number one, mindset. Yeah. Number two, skill set. Number three, habits. Don't yeah. complicate it. Go get your mindset right. Go get your skill sets right. Get your habits right, and you'll be unstoppable. You'll succeed at anything that you want to succeed in with the right mindset, yeah. the right skill set, and the right habits. If 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 your mindset's wrong, you can definitely almost bet you're not going to make it, even if you're talented and you have the right habits. If your mindset's wrong, you'll sabotage yourself. You'll do something to ruin it, I promise you. So your mindset's important. However, just because you have a good mindset doesn't mean you're going to succeed. It is possible to run passionately in the wrong direction. So at the end of the day, you need a good mindset, but then you need a good skill set. Everybody should take assessment of their skills. Mm -hmm. Like, and be honest with yourself. Like, yeah. quit, quit answering it for other people. You think you're good at this? Oh, well, yeah, I'm good at that. Like, a ask yourself, what am I good at? And if the answer is, I'm not really good at anything. I'm not worth anything. Okay, that's your mindset. That's not a skill set problem. Yeah. Thinking that you cannot improve is a mindset problem. Not improving is a mindset problem. Why? Because, dude, if you don't believe it's possible to improve, like, in other words, do you believe you can raise your IQ or you're born with it? I think you raise it. You can raise no, it. No, you can raise it. It's damn straight you can raise it. Yeah. Some people believe you're born with it. It is what it is. I don't have a choice. That's a fixed scarcity mindset. mindset. You want an abundant mindset. You want to believe, right? So there's mindset. Then there's skill set. Are you good at anything? And if the answer is no, not really. Well, here's the good news. You can get good at whatever it is you want. It takes practice, accountability, repetition. But at the end of the day, you can get good at anything you want. So what do you need to be good at? Well, I don't know. What are you trying to be good at? Well, sales, communication, marketing, nowadays coding. Like, yeah. dude, someone that can write code, they're valuable, period. Yeah. Okay, AI engineers, people that know how to train AI. Yeah. Because a lot of people say, oh, AI, AI. Listen, you got to train the shit for it to be real valuable. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you can get good at. I would suggest you do the basics, sales, marketing, communication, branding. Yeah. Get good at something. Get your skill sets right. And then your habits. Because if your mindset's right and you're and you're really talented and really good, but your habits are terrible, you still end up crashed. Yeah. So all you got to do is quit complicating it. Say, man, what do I want to do in life? Okay, I want to do this. Great. Look at your mindset towards that. Look at your skill set and then look at your habits. Keep shit simple, rock and roll and follow me because oh, I yeah. drop nuggets like this on a regular basis. Yeah. One of my favorite gangster entrepreneurs in the world, guys, this has been absolutely incredible. Brad, uh, thank you so much for coming in and dropping bombs. Every single time we sit t down together, I just get so fired up. I'm like, yes. Well, thanks for having go. me, even though you picked a spot we, that have ridiculous restrictions. <laughs> on cigars. We got We're outside, $150 folks. cigars here. <laughs> hey, I we're outside i love it well thanks for kicking it with us again guys if you haven't seen the behind the scenes with bradley check it out you get to see like the real shit like we talked about today we just you know document don't create uh if you found value in this podcast drop an 11 out of 10 uh every week we're bringing you the best entrepreneurs in the world 11 out of 10 entrepreneurs stay tuned every week you should be consuming these listening these taking notes and don't just listen to it Take it, adopt it like Lightspeed does. Repetition. Repetition. Practice. Implement. Practice. Implement it because you can watch this stuff all day long, but if you don't apply it to your life, it's meaningless. You're just, it's just entertainment. Uh, we want to change your life and that's the reason why we're doing this. In fact, let me just say something. If you guys don't put this on the cutting room floor, if you're out there, you're not making at least a quarter million dollars a year and you want to. Go to bradlee.com, fill out an application, come work for one of my companies, and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Hell yeah. It's not rocket science, kids. Not it's rocket simple. science. People are like, Brad, you, uh, you can't make that claim. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. If you're willing to put in the work, okay, 
I will hire you and train you to make at least a quarter mil. That's an incredible offer. So guys, we're going to link that especially down below. All you, especially all you realtors now that can't gouge people. <laughs> Or you're, not, you're not you're not gouging you're just not get, you're just you're just no longer allowed to get free free dough yeah that was a girl all right hey, all you're, the retailers. You're, hey, you went from a realtor to an unrealtor <laughs> i love it we'll link that down below guys drop 11 or 10 in the comments if you have questions we're reading every single comment respond to them ourselves and we'll see you in the next episode thanks it's oh, full of boxes of brand new stuff look at this star it's yoda